Fuck. Future's End is the story of 35 years later in the DC Universe, told 5 years later in the DC Universe when Bruce Wayne and Mr. Terrific, but not the one from the JSA, but also not the original one, built a supercomputer named Brother Eye in order to protect the world, which leads to Brother Eye overriding his programming and assimilating the entire human population into one mechanical hive mind. So the Flash teams up with Leonard Snart in order to defeat a robo-spider Wonder Woman until they're interrupted by Frankenstein's monster from the novel Frankenstein who uses the secret Black Canary power carved into his chest in order to vaporize the Flash, all while Jon Stewart, but not the Jon Stewart from The Daily Show, and Blue Beetle, but not the original Blue Beetle, nor the second Blue Beetle, fight off a RoboCrab version of Superman until RoboCrab Superman blasts Jon Stewart in the chest with a laser beam. Meanwhile, Batman and Terry McGinnis, who is also Batman, but from the future, but not this Earth's future despite the fact that this story is set in main continuity, plan to send Bruce back in time to destroy Brother eye before he is even created until a cybernetic version of Batman Incorporated, which is an international league of Batman established by Batman in order to spread Batman's righteous justice across the globe, break into the Batcave and stab Bruce. So Terry grabs Batman's Fitbit, which is actually a secret portal designed to jump back in time. So Terry leaves Bruce, activates the wristwatch, travels back in time, gets attacked by a cyborg, gets pushed through the wrong portal, and ends up seven years too early, so now we have to read this book. And also this all takes place in issue zero. But don't worry, because none of this shit will ever come up again. So while all of this is happening, the group of superheroes known as Stormwatch, which is actually actually a subsidiary of Shade, get absolutely obliterated in space by a mysterious unknown force. While on Earth, Jason Rush, who is the second half of Firestorm, which is a super secret superpower that combines the power of two individuals in order to transmute matter into basically just fire, interrupts the other half of Firestorm while he's having sex. So Ronnie storms off, which results in the death of Green Arrow, who also isn't dead, while the character Grifter murders an innocent family because they are secret aliens from another Earth. You see, during the war that takes place in the Earth 2 World's End weekly series, which was not published at the time this book came out, Darkseid, who is the god of anti-life from the fourth world planet of Apocalypse, who is actually just an avatar for an even greater being who is also named Darkseid, decided to destroy everyone who lives on Earth 2. So the refugees of Earth 2 fled from Earth 2 to Earth 1, which resulted in an army of parademons invading Earth 1, sparking the largest war in multiversal history that happens off-page, and leads to the death of many great heroes. But eventually Earth 1 pulls together and wins, which results in deep-seated hatred and racism towards anyone from Earth 2, which leads to this guy named Justin torturing several people from Earth 2, which is why the badass Grifter is taking out this local suburban family. But Grifter is secretly being hunted down by the character King Faraday, who is secretly working for a secret employer who is also related to Mr. Terrific, who is an egomaniac obsessed with getting Twitter followers by mass marketing the Pokeball, who also attends Green Arrow's funeral, where Animal Man mentions that Green Arrow died in the city he loved, Star City. No, wait, Seattle. Until Firestorm shows up, which makes the other heroes mad because he was too late to save Ollie because Ronnie was having sex. And meanwhile, Terry is on some roof, and Daily Planet reporter Lois Lane gets a mysterious package that doesn't matter for the next five issues. Meanwhile, Terry plots to break into Terrific Tech to kill Brother Eye, so he teams up with a group of robbers to break into Terrific Tech, whose one member is secretly the robot who chased Terry down in the past, but her current cyborg body is in a shopping cart. Cut to Grifter, who gets kidnapped by King Faraday, who drugs him and brings him to the terrifying island of Maryland, which... <laughs> which houses the Cadmus building that stores a secret metahuman prison of heroes from Earth 2 and is surrounded by an army of Omax, which are ultra-powerful beings that were created by Brother Eye, except these ones weren't. Then a character who is 8 years old named 50 Sue kills Big Barda, who is also from Earth 2 but is secretly from Apocalypse and eventually moves to New Genesis, except he's not actually dead and has a secret connection to the island that has nothing to do with John Constantine, who is researching crop circles to predict the future arrival of an alien supercomputer that's not Brother Eye that is actually just an avatar for an even greater being that isn't Darkseid, which is the same being that killed Stormwatch, which results in and a new Stormwatch getting formed by a man named Father Time who is actually a 10 year old girl, which consists of Frankenstein's monster from the novel Frankenstein, Princess Amethyst, who is no longer a princess because her world got destroyed in the war that we never get to see in this book, and Nanites, courtesy of Ray Palmer. They're delivering a high frequency pulse that's disabling your speed. You're not going to be running around for quite a while. So this Stormwatch goes to investigate the death of the old Stormwatch, so they travel to the Phantom Zone, which is a secret prison created to hold all of Superman's most powerful foes. Then, Stormwatch confronts Black Adam, who is notably not one of Superman's foes, until they beat Black Adam and escape from Superman's private prison. Despite the fact that the current Superman is retired, and the character Superman is not actually the character Superman, he is actually someone else in disguise. And this Superman eventually finds out about King Faraday, so of course he does nothing to stop him, while Lois Lane confronts the man Cal Cochran, who is actually Tim Drake, who is secretly Red Robin, who actually died during the war, but it turns out that Tim Drake did not actually die in the war and instead settled down with his girlfriend Madison, who will later become Firestorm at the Wounded Duck Bar. At the Wounded Duck Bar. But of course, Tim denies the allegations because Lois has absolutely no proof, so Lois walks away until she bumps into Terry McGinnis, who is currently disguised as a hobo, to beat up Mr. Terrific to get access to his secret laboratory, but he actually can't get in. So cut back to Cadmus Island, where Deathstroke the Terminator gets assigned his partner 50 Sue, who is actually an omnipotent superhuman, which marks the second all powerful 
powerful 10 year old girl in the series, and the two talk to each other until the character 50 Sue says, Sue me for caring. Then, Grifter gets punched by 50 Sue to the edge of Cadmus Island, where he encounters an Omac that nearly kills him. Then, the newly formed superhero slash supervillain team of Grifter, Deathstroke, and 50 Sue discover that Cadmus is secretly a prison used to store Earth 2 metahumans, until next issue when Grifter spits out several walls of exposition because he doesn't know what the fuck is going on in this book. Until he gets punched by 50 Sue and beaten up by another Omac, and because Grifter has been gone for so long, his friend Justin starts getting paranoid, so he gets out of Dodge, but not before using E.T. as a slur for an Earth 2 citizen and killing him. But Justin is also going to get recruited by Faraday, who contacts his niece to get a job done, but he's actually trying to find the person that she is hiding, and also why is Faraday trying to collect all these people in the first place? Meanwhile, new Stormwatch finds the crash site of old Stormwatch. Then, Frankenstein tears off the arm of Hawkman's dead body, who was a priest from the ancient Egypt- Okay, I'm not explaining Hawkman's origin. But it turns out the Hawkman is not dead, but he still lost his arm, and it turns out that Frankenstein is an incel, because he calls Amethyst Milady, which makes deceased old Stormwatch member, the engineer, so mad that she comes back to life, but it turns out she is secretly being controlled by Brainiac, who is also responsible for the original Stormwatch's deaths, and is currently a sentient Kool-Aid man who is killing people all over the planet Earth, all while Terry is still moping around on the same rooftop, until he meets with his new bank robber friends at the Wounded Duck Bar to publicly discuss how they're going to rob Terrific Tech. But of course, Cal slash Tim overhears this and tries to tell the information to his girlfriend Madison, but Madison's father is actually a convicted war criminal that eventually gets broken out of prison by the character Rampage, so days later Superman breaks into some random building downtown because he thought they would be there, but Rampage is actually getting surgery done to make her lose her powers, which is actually a trick, and she gets blown up and doesn't die while the guy who blew her up in the building texts on my way to his presumably evil boss. Then, Brother Eye from 35 years from now brings Joker out of his cell to fuse him and Batman together to make a Batman-Joker cyborg to send back in the past to hunt down Terry McGinnis. So you see, Terry going back in time was all part of Brother Eye's evil plan to complete the cycle of time and bring up the rise of the Autobots or whatever the fuck. But Brother Eye also needs to send the Batman-Joker hybrid back in time to kill Terry because Brian Azzarello and the rest of the writers need to create a selling point for this book other than the story. But of course, Brother Eye doesn't send the Batman-Joker hybrid back in time yet because it takes 20 issues to assimilate people, despite the fact he's sending them anywhere in time, so time actually doesn't matter in this scenario. Anyway, Grifter and co are still on Cadmus Island and now have to roleplay as a happy family so 50 Sue doesn't kill all of them, so 50 Sue and Deathstroke go on a mission while Grifter nearly gets killed again by another Omac. Remember when Grifter was an alien-killing badass? So while Deathstroke is away, Mr. Miracle, which is one of the Earth 2 metas, escapes from his cell, which he has secretly been doing for the entirety of the story to collect information about how to escape, which leads to the lamest breakout of all time when the Earth 2 metahumans just walk out of their cell. But this was all actually a secret plan by Green Arrow. Now, the mission that 50 Sue and Deathstroke were on was to kill Big Barda, who was the escape meta that 50 Sue killed earlier, but she somehow isn't dead and is now teamed up with Emiko Queen, who is also Green Arrow's daughter. So the two pairs fight and Big Barda mentions nice shot Hunger Games, which means that Hunger Games is still culturally relevant five years in the future. But then they escape and travel to Green Arrow Island, which is the secret island of Lian Yu, which is the place where Oliver was stranded for five years, which also, if you didn't know, means purgatory in Mandarin. You see, this entire story was actually all part of a well-orchestrated plan by Green Arrow, who is actually not dead and is currently amassing an army on Green Arrow Island because back in the war five years ago when the Earth 2 metahumans transported to Earth they actually did not die in the explosion caused by the apocalyptic chips and instead were teleported by Brother Eye and then captured by Cadmus and taken to Cadmus Island to plant software chips in their brains in order to control them and create an entire metahuman army to enslave the world. And Green Arrow knew about this and was also a public figure for Earth 2 human rights. So to avoid the eye of the public and take down Cadmus, Green Arrow faked his own death to plan a secret invasion of the Cadmus Island which involved getting Big Barda on their side which would involve a secret invasion of the Cadmus Island but Mr. Miracle was actually plotting with Ollie on Cadmus Island to plot the escape of the Earth 2 metahumans. Then Green Arrow, Big Barda, and his secret army invade Cadmus, which was actually all part of the plan by Brother Eye in order to take control of Cadmus because the control chips planted in the Earth 2 metas were actually microchips to assimilate all the metahumans into Brother Eye robots. And meanwhile, in 50 Sue's ultra top secret authorized personnel only, trespassers will be eviscerated super secret sidekick bunker. Brother Eye is of course threatened by 50 Sue, so the two strike a deal so that 50 Sue and her friends can live on the island without Brother Eye killing them. But while all this is happening, Sergeant Rock, who is a World War II veteran who is now a dick, hires agents to kill 50 Sue. But it doesn't matter because they won't, except Deathstroke secretly wanted to kill her, so Brother Eye shows the footage of Deathstroke talking smack on her to 50 Sue, so she's upset now, but it's too late because Green Arrow's army invades the island, which is still controlled by Brother Eye, because Green Arrow planted a tracker in Deathstroke's skin to find Cadmus Island. So they decapitate Deathstroke, make a joke about 50 Lou, shut down power to the island, and run away until Lois Lane, who was also on the island because of her secret package that gave her coordinates to land in the middle of the ocean, which is actually Cadmus Island, where she runs into herself, who is also from Earth 2, who is also a robot, but that doesn't matter because she immediately dies. So Lois, Green Arrow, and the rest of the gang kill Brother Eye, except they don't and escape on a boat to safety, except they aren't safe because Brother Eye hacks into Lois Lane's cell phone even though he doesn't need to because he's also in New York. Hacking into the Daily Planet is especially important because Lois Lane recently released a story talking about the new Superman, you know, the one that responded to someone talking about Green Arrow's death by saying, yeah, that sucked 
was secretly Shazam the entire time, which fueled more hate between Lois and the public, so she eventually released an article exposing Cadmus to reveal the truth, except no one really cares about Earth 2, but they also don't care about Superman's identity because the real Superman retired during the war, for a reason that we only learned in the Superman Future's End tie-in issue, which was an ad to buy the rest of the Future's End tie-ins. No, they're not just throwing... <laughs> Well, some of them are probably. So 50 Sue starts wearing Deathstroke's mask and forces some employee from Cadmus to become her mom, while Constantine travels to Africa to find the original Superman who dukes it out with Jello Brainiac and ends up killing him, except he's not really dead because the real Brainiac is actually a fucking bear until Superman ends up killing him because he's not really dead because the real Brainiac is still possessing Engineer who captured and enslaved the new Stormwatch, except Hawkman is still flirting with Amethyst even though they're going to die, and some space-looking dude tries to recruit Ray Palmer to lead Stormwatch to go on a mission to stop the big galactic threat that they are currently on a mission to stop, and it turns out that the threat aka Brainiac is actually God and the Kool-Aid Man is Robo-Jesus. Then, Ray Palmer brings Black Adam back from the Phantom Zone to fight Blood Moon Brainiac, but he's really fucking powerful, so they all flee to Earth until they're interrupted by Father Time, who is actually a mind-sucking space squid, until New Stormwatch beats him and takes over Shade because Father Time wanted to kill the Engineer because she's going to be responsible for Brainiac teleporting to Earth. And then, the Engineer becomes responsible for Brainiac teleporting to Earth. But not before Frankenstein goes to meet Victor Frankenstein from the novel Frankenstein until he fucking dies. Amethyst then stabs Constantine because he's an asshole, but not the real Constantine who never shows up for the rest of the book. Flashback to Brainiac and the Engineer. You see, the entire plot of this book was actually an elaborate plan by Brainiac, except for all the Brother Eye stuff. So Brainiac planted seeds at the beginning of time so they could rip Manhattan out of the Earth with his giant space segue. And what's that? Oh, it's time for shitty Firestorm plot drama. You see, after Jason and Ronnie broke up, Jason went off to work with a clearly delusional professor who's obsessed with teleporter technology, and Ronnie went off to try and fuck Tim Drake's girlfriend. But it turns out none of them got what they wanted, because Dr. Yamazaki kidnaps Madison and tries to teleport her, which results in Yamazaki becoming Dr. Polaris, Ronnie literally dying, Jason and Madison becoming the new Firestorm, and also Terry is still on the same roof. And don't worry, because Firestorm never becomes important again for the rest of the story. My gosh, does she stick around. Then, remember when Brother Eye wanted to create the most cumbersome claptrap to become his Terminator copyright? Well, he's finally done being assembled and travels back in time to kill Terry, but somehow doesn't manage to be able to find Terry despite the fact he's been on the same roof since he arrived here. So instead, the cyborg fights Bruce Wayne, who is actually responsible for key coil and plastique trying to break into Terrific Tech like 20 issues ago to destroy the AI that he created. Anyway, Brainiac is now laying death to Manhattan, so Kal-El comes out of retirement to fight Brainiac, but Brainiac decides that instead of partaking in this fucking stupid weekly, he's gonna create Telos. But before Running away, Firestorm, Ray Palmer, and Mr. Terrific all Gigantamax raid battle Brainiac and capture him inside a Pokeball. But this was all part of Brother Eye's plan who now takes over all of Manhattan, but of course we couldn't finish out this book without 50 Sue's mom secretly having insect superpowers and paralyzing Sergeant Rock. Anyway, Brother Eye kills Terry. Tim then takes the mantle of Batman Beyond and tries to jump back in the future to when Brother Eye teleports the Earth 2 refugees away. Tim then convinces Brother Eye to destroy himself, so he does, except he doesn't, but this whole book is actually all part of Brother Eye's plan as Tim Drake travels 35 years into the future to find newer Stormwatch and future Madison because this whole book was actually all part of Madison's plan to kill Terry and bring Tim to the future to take down Brother Eye despite the two having presumably the same skill set. But all of this book was actually just a setup for the tie-ins, which were actually a setup for this new Batman Beyond book, which is actually a setup for Convergence, which is actually a setup for Earth 2 World's End when they retcon all this shit, which is actually a setup for Earth 2 Society, which is actually all a setup for Telos. Fuck this book. Hey guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, at InfinityIncom1, and let me know what you think of Future's End in the comments below, because it sucks. See you guys next time.